I do neuro-ophthalmology, which is evaluate people who have problems with their vision or eye movements that is not due to the eye itself, but how the brain controls the eyes. I also deal with vestibular disorders, patients who are dizzy or off balance. That can be secondary to a peripheral or inner ear problem. There are so many different types of senses that help you keep your balance that the brain has to process. And so when any of those are disrupted, the patient, all they know is they feel dizzy or they feel off balance and they come and we can evaluate them and kind of better sort out what different types of problems that they might have. Probably the biggest advance in technology that's made a difference for me is imaging. When I started, they had just come out with a CT scan. I worked at a hospital that had, I think, the second or third CT in the country. To get a CT scan, it had to be an emergency. I would have to go with them in an ambulance 30 minutes across town to get a CT scan. So now we're able to see an incredible amount of detail on an MRI that you, I can just call up and get an emergency MRI that day, and I can make a diagnosis quickly, and the ability to make those diagnoses is is so much better, it's, it's like orders of magnitude different. I do eye movement recordings. Normally the brain is supposed to be able to put your eyes exactly from one spot to another and keep them still. There are a lot of abnormalities where the eyes are moving when they're not supposed to be. That type of movement gives us some clue to what's not in balance in the, uh, in the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system. So we can detect vestibular abnormalities if a patient is mildly dizzy, all testing may be normal, but we can actually see abnormalities in the eyes and the eye movements that are uh, exceedingly helpful in the management of those patients. We can look at pupil function uh, and the spontaneous movements of the pupils. The pupils are constantly oscillating, even if the light is uh, not changing, and even if you're in the dark, the pupils are constantly oscillating. That oscillation gives us some idea of how well the brain is functioning as well, and that can be abnormal in different conditions, such as Parkinson's disease and other systemic abnormalities. Neuroophthalmology and, and neurology and medicine in general is learning a tremendous amount in recent years about genetic function, how genetics affects what diseases you get, how to treat those specific diseases, how you will respond to different treatments. And so I think that's going to be a huge advance in many different areas.